Thank you for joining. In this lesson, we will create models for our project using C# -sharp classes. If you need to review the structure of the data models we will be creating in this lesson, please refer to the previous lessons where the domain models structure were explained. These are the shortcuts I'll be using throughout this course to create properties, classes, constructors, and so on. In Visual Studio, within our project, let's create a folder named model. This model folder will contain a domain subfolder which will contain our domain models classes. I'll start by creating the first file and I'll name the class planet. To indicate that the property should serve as the primary key in entity framework, we will add key attribute. Additionally, we need to include using system component model data annotations. Next, I will define all properties in accordance with the model we discussed in previous lessons. The planet ID property will have a type of GeoID, and the key attribute applied to the planet property in our planet class signifies that planet ID should be treated as the primary key in the corresponding database table. Other properties will have types of string and double. To align with our models, we also need to mark the image property as nullable to avoid exceptions. Furthermore, the planet class contains foreign keys, which establish relationships between the planet entity and other entities, namely solar system and water, in our database. When entity framework migration is executed, it will automatically create these two navigation properties and establish the necessary relationships. Next, we need to add two more entities or classes as additional domain models. I will duplicate the file and the second file will be named solar system. In this new file, I will remove unnecessary properties, retaining only the required ones. Similarly, for the third entry water, I will follow the same process of removing any unnecessary properties. As discussed in our previous lessons, these three domain models represent our tables, and the properties within these classes will become columns in these tables. Additionally, I will implement an attribute constraint to limit the quantity of characters for our string properties. Since the string type property length is figuratively unlimited, we should decorate these properties with limits based on our requirements. In case you encounter warnings, you can use the null for given operator to address them. Like this. In the next lesson, we will begin using dbContext and dbSet classes as discussed in the previous lesson. Thanks for watching. If you have any questions or need further assistance, feel free to comment below. Don't forget to hit that like button and subscribe to our channel for more great coding content. Stay updated with the latest videos by ringing the notification bell. Happy coding!